Uh, this is uh, Dr. Jackson Wright, Emeritus Professor of Medicine at Case Western Reserve University, University Hospitals uh, Cleveland Medical Center, and co-lead of Team Best Practices for Cardio. This presentation is in collaboration with Dr. Sherry Bolin, Associate Professor of Medicine at Case Western Reserve University Metro Health Medical Center, and co-PI of Cardio. The purpose of this presentation is to assist you in discussing with your team the new evidence that provide the rationale for the lower blood pressure targets now recommended in the latest U.S. guideline published by the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association in 2017. Now, I want you to feel free to use or adapt these slides to review with your providers and staff. Typically, we spend about 20 minutes discussing the data and helping to answer questions or concerns about the blood pressure targets and timely follow-up. The questions often arise about this project, particularly when discussing uh, these new lower blood pressure targets. Uh, we have included some common questions and answers at the end of the slides and in the notes sections. As we uh, review the slides today, also consider additional questions which may arise from your teams, and we will be happy to answer those as well. We will start out uh, with one of many meta-analyses uh, that have been done looking at various blood pressure targets in clinical trials. Uh, now, this is one of the later meta-analyses, a network meta-analysis of 42 randomized clinical trials that looked at the effect of different blood pressure targets on a major cardiovascular disease events. And what they show is that for comparing the uh, systolic blood pressure achieved in the trials between 120 and 124 versus higher blood pressure targets, you see a progressive reduction in risk of cardiovascular events in achieving systolic blood pressure 120 to 124 versus higher blood pressure targets. These findings appear at every blood pressure target above 120 uh, to 124. It serves uh, for major cardiovascular disease events as well as findings for stroke, coronary heart disease, and all-cause mortality. These results include the findings from the SPRINT trial, which you've heard about and we will discuss in more detail later in the presentation. But the results also hold whether the results from SPRINT are included in the meta-analysis or not. And as I indicated, this is one of several meta-analyses that uh, come to the same conclusions. Now let's talk about the SPRINT trial in some detail because this was the largest trial to uh, improvise the most convincing evidence of the rationale for the lower blood pressure targets. The sprint consisted of, of 9,361 participants who were randomized to either a systolic blood pressure of less than 140 uh, versus a systolic blood pressure of less than 120. Now, as seen in this slide, there was uh, systolic blood pressure targets that were achieved uh, with the systolic blood pressure target achieved in those randomized to less than 140 of 136 and this mean systolic blood pressure target in those randomized to less than 120 uh, was 121 averaged throughout the trial. In addition, what you can see is that after six months, the average systolic blood pressure was below the less than 120 target. The average number of medications required to achieve the uh, systolic blood pressure of less than 140 was a little less than two. Uh, to achieve the systolic blood pressure target of less than 120 was a, an average of about one more medication or th uh, three medications. Again, we were able to achieve the systolic blood pressure targets in this trial. This slide gives the results in the SPRINT trial and should remember that the trial was stopped by the Data Safety and Monitoring Board because of the fact, and it was stopped early. The trial was originally designed to run five years, but there was a 25% reduction in the primary outcome in the trial, which included a heart attacks, stroke, heart failure, cardiovascular death, or acute coronary syndrome. And there was a 25% lower risk of 
of these outcomes in those randomized to the less than 120 target compared to those randomized to the less than 140 target. And even more impressively, there was a 27% lower risk of death from any cause in those randomized to the less than 120 compared to those randomized to less than 140. In all of the pre-specified subgroups, which included the presence or absence of CKD, uh, age above or below age 75, male or female, African-American, non-African-American, presence or absence of cardiovascular disease at baseline, and uh, three uh, blood pressure turtiles at baseline. Uh, regardless, uh, essentially all of these subgroups appeared to benefit if they were randomized uh, to the less than 120 target versus those randomized to the less than 140 target. Uh, benefit was seen in these subgroups. Benefit was also uh, seen in Hispanic patients in those with uh, metabolic syndrome or not. All of those uh, subgroups benefited uh, from uh, systolic blood pressure of less than 120 compared to those randomized to less than 140. A group at particular interest was in the older patients. Uh, if you, you remember, uh, just prior to spread in patients over age 60, the recommendation was that those patients should be treated, in fact, to only a blood pressure of less than 150 over 90, whereas it was less than 140 over 90 in those under age 60. However, in Sprint, uh, what was actually shown was that those patients, even over age 75, also appeared to benefit more from the less than 120 uh, blood pressure target compared to less than 140, as even in that subgroup. And in fact, we have data in those over age 80, which showed similar findings, but those findings in those over age 70 uh, showed uh, 25% a lower risk of the primary outcome. Number needed to treat uh, to prevent a primary outcome in those in the overall cohort was 61. In those uh, over age 75, the number needed to treat was only 28. Uh, to prevent a death from any cause in the overall cohort uh, was the number needed to treat was 90. The number needed to treat in those over age 75 was down to 41. In the overall cohort, the reduction in all-cause mortality uh, was uh, 27%. However, in those over age 75, there was a 32% reduction in all-cause mortality in those randomized to less than 120 uh, compared to those randomized to less than 140. The question often arises, are these the patients uh, that I see in my clinic? And the answer is very likely. Uh, uh, Sprint had two measures of frailty uh, in the trial. And uh, on the basis of those measures, patients were classified into fit, less fit, and frail. And as seen in these data, that whether or not which frailty class, including uh, those classified as frail, they also uh, appear to uh, benefit in terms of preventing cardiovascular events if they were randomized to the less than 120 target compared to those randomized to the less than 140 target. Sprint also had a sub-study that looked at the effect of the lower blood pressure targets on decline in cognition. The results of the Sprint mine was published in two publications in JAMA uh, last year in 2019. And what, they, what it showed was those randomized to less than 120 had a significantly lower rate of mild cognitive impairment, uh, which is on the continuum between significant impairment in cognition, but not yet uh, probable dementia. And there was a significant reduction in mild cognitive impairment and the composite of mild cognitive impairment in probable dementia as well as in characteristic white matter lesions on MRI uh, in another component of that study. Uh, reduction in dementia alone was not significant, uh, likely because the trial was in fact stopped early. Currently, aggressive blood pressure treatment 
is the only treatment uh, that we have now that has been shown to slow or prevent progression uh, of dementia. And in addition, uh, even though the numbers in Sprint uh, were relatively small to show less than 120 target on incident uh, dementia, uh, when combined with other trials that have looked at the effect of blood pressure treatment on the development of dementia, the meta-analysis of those trials uh, did show a significant benefit now, what about the safety of the less than 120 uh, versus the less than 140 target? It's shown here. Essentially, looking at the number of serious adverse events in those randomized to the standard arm, or less than 140, compared to those randomized to the intensive arm, there was no significant difference in the number of serious adverse events in the overall cohort. And impressively, uh, even though there were more serious adverse events or a, a larger percent of participants having a serious adverse events in those over age 70, again, they were no more likely uh, to have a serious adverse event if they were randomized to the uh, less than 120 group or uh, compared to those randomized to the less than 140 target. However, now there were uh, some adverse events that did appear more commonly in those randomized to less than 120. A hypotension, about a half percent higher incidence of syncope. Injurious fall was not increased in those randomized to the intensive, to the less than 120 arm. There was a, a significant, about a one and a half percent higher rate of acute kidney injury. These acute kidney injury events, 90 to 95 percent of those resolved by the end of the trial. There were serious adverse events that did occur w within the trial. None were as significant as the uh, primary outcome when you look at the clinical outcomes of cardiovascular events and all-cause mortality. And the tolerability of the less than 120 target on quality of life is shown on this slide. And as you can see, these lines essentially, the less than 120 uh, versus the less than 140 targets, the lines overlap in terms of quality of life, which was published about 2017. Those results were published. And there appears to be no difference whether you're talking about physical uh, symptoms, whether you're talking about mental symptoms, depression, the quality of life on uh, patient reported outcomes was no different uh, in either treatment group. This slide shows a summary of the recent hypertension guidelines from around the world. Since the publication of Sprint and consistent with the new ACC AHA uh, 2017 guideline, most other international guidelines have lowered uh, their blood pressure targets. The current target uh, recommended in the U.S. is less than 130 over 80. As you can see, the blood pressure targets uh, recommended by most other guidelines around the world are now less than 130 over 80. The Canadian guidelines and the Australian guidelines have actually adopted the less than 120 uh, target as a result of the SPRINT trial. In summary, uh, clearly uh, the data support uh, the use of the lower blood pr pressure target of less than 130 over 80. Uh, in all age groups, uh, and subgroups uh, uh, for most individuals. Uh, nearly all national and international guidelines now recommend blood pressure targets in this range. As indicated, some have recommended even lower targets, and uh, there is ample evidence to support it. Now, a minority of, uh, of individuals uh, will not tolerate or benefit from the lower blood pressure target. Uh, and the current U.S. guideline does allow for clinical judgment, uh, especially in patients over age 65, the high burden of comorbidities, and limited life expectancy. I think what we have to keep in mind uh, is a performance metric for a practice is different uh, from a clinical uh, practice guideline for individual patients. 
in order for practices to achieve uh, the performance uh, high percentage of patients achieving uh, less than 140 over 90, uh, the median systolic blood pressures uh, in the practices uh, uh, range uh, between 124 and 126. And this project and, and the latest HEDIS uh, measure uh, use 140 over 90 uh, as the uh, performance metric. However, a performance metric allows for the fact that not every patient uh, in the practice will meet the uh, performance target at every visit. A monthly follow-up is required in order to achieve blood pressure target of less than 130 or over 80. And scheduling these monthly follow-ups uh, promotes the ability of, of clinicians to assist their patients in achieving uh, the blood pressure targets more quickly. And lastly, uh, home blood pressure monitoring is recommended to assist uh, with determining uh, uh, accurate blood pressure control, promotes uh, adherence. With that, uh, this concludes the, uh, the presentation. Again, uh, hopefully this will be helpful in assisting uh, you in discussing uh, the evidence uh, supporting uh, the new blood pressure targets and obtaining buy-in both within the practice and with your patients in achieving the control rates that are desired in preventing the complications of hypertension.